Okay. We're ready. We're ready to go? Okay. Okay, awesome. Well, hey guys, it's uh, Steve and Greg again for the command table. Um, we're here on episode two. Today we're focusing on recursion. Um, we've got a pretty good list put together. Graveyard we're, recursion. Yes, graveyard recursion. Yeah. Um, we're going to focus on our legendary creatures first, so we'll go through a few of those and talk about them, and we'll go through the rest of the list here. Um, so first up is Grinzo, Dungeon Warden. And I know you've had a little bit of experience with this guy, so I'll let you take the take the mic here. Yeah, so what you want to do is be able to scry as a key component of this guy. Because you scry something to the bottom of it's a creature, you know you're going to get a creature with his ability. Um, a lot, I've seen a lot of people play this card and they just go off the luck of what is on the bottom and they miss quite a few times. But to be able to stack your odds is a way to go with this guy. Well, and I know a lot of people play with like the lantern and stuff like that mm -hmm. to kind of like fix things. And Oh, yeah. Interesting and, card, that's for and sure. And he, he has the X ability, so he comes up, you can pump him up pretty good. So that's a big plus. So he can come in pretty large and be able to just take over the battlefield right there and then... If he's big enough, he can pretty much pull anything off the bottom of your library and put it in play. So. It's like nice shieldred. Blah. Yeah, and if you can put one one <laughs> counters on him, yeah, you know, after the fact, that's always a good plus too. That's true. You know, there's a lot of cards that double counters and do things like that. So yeah, so Mr. That's, Grinzo. That's Grinzo. And then we've got Alesha. I know that I I've never personally tried this one. I, I have it in a uh, tribal humans deck that I have. Um, she works okay in there, but I, it's not you know built around her, so she gets a few of my smaller creatures out. But I believe I, she saw some tiny leader play. Yes, because yes. she has three. And I think ability. they designed her for that at this point. I think they were designing oh, for that yeah, format. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think that's what was going on. She's cool. I mean, it, it's an interesting ability. Plus, having the hybrid uh, ability costs, you mm -hmm. know, makes it that three colors kind of thing. Right. So yeah. interesting card, that's for sure. And then. I not not too much more for me to say on no, that one. She got I'm not first sure. strike, yeah. yeah, three damage first strike, and ED or a tiny leader that was really key. Yes, yeah, yes. So anyway, on from Alicia, we've got Hannah Ship's Navigator. I know we just recently did a deck tech on this one. Um, I'll continue to say one of my favorite cards gets you back, you know, a multitude of cards from your graveyard that you really want. Well, it says artifact enchantments, but there's a lot of enchantment creatures and artifact creatures. Exactly. So there you go. Well, and like her ability really does not cost that much, and she's a low cost commander as well. Mm -hmm. So, it, I don't know, in my opinion, she's really efficient for what she costs. Right. She's going to need some hex proof or something to oh, keep yeah. her alive because, yeah, she's. Well, and that's, I mean, I, that's true, but I mean, paying five for her the next time really isn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, she scales yeah. pretty well. I know that, you know, it's not, not ideal to be paying seven the next time or whatever, but. I, you know, can see her dying well, a few times playing, and being okay. She is playing in colors that play bounce. Yes. So you can protect her pretty well with bounce stuff and things like that. Yeah. 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 I, I just know that grabbing, like, a worm coil engine with this card is just ridiculous. It's bonkers. You know, just being able it to... It goes your hand and you got to be able to cast it. But yes. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, and then... You know, adding to that, once like in our deck tech, like having untap effects in a deck like this is great. She's just a cool commander. So anyway, that's Hannah. <laughs> Let's see, we've got a very well-known one by oh, this yeah. point. Uh, we've got Marin. Um, she uh, definitely popped up in our meta pretty uh, pretty heavily oh, there yeah. for a little while. I think there was like five or six people running her. I know I had a deck for a little while. Do you still have a deck? Oh, yeah. Or? I still yeah. play it. It's, it does really well. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you want your stuff to die. Go ahead and attack. I'm blocking and killing it. And, you know, my, guy, my count, my... Uh, what is it? What's the, um, not energy, but the experience counters. Yes, experience counters. And those don't go away. No. Um, there is some things that can um, advance the experience counters. Yes. Double them when they come in. You know, well, the new, the new snake. Like, if you yeah. think about, I can't remember what his name is, but that snake will put counters on there for you, oh, too. Oh, Constrictor? Yes, yeah. yes. Like, I once I read that card and thought about this card, I was just like, oh, my gosh, oh, this yeah. is ridiculous. Um, I know a lot of people really like running her almost in place of Gerard on you know their old oh, yeah, Gerard yeah. decks because she's a less threatening commander up front sometimes um, I don't actually see it that way I think this commander is actually better than of the two of them but a lot of people well, think that way and this thing works really well against mill people are oh, milling yeah. you they're not going to want to mill you unless it's an Ulamog and they're <laughs> exiling it but you know that's a whole different story <laughs> but I'm just saying they don't want to mill you if you're playing this guy yes, exactly. you, got, you got your choice of a lot of creatures yeah 
that. But I think I do play Gerard in. Well, have you ever good. played it, played at a table with three Marin decks? No. I've had that happen, and oh my gosh. Oh, wow. uh, they get that orb out. What is the orb called? Uh, the one where if you untap, you put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Is it Zur? Mesmeric Orb, yes. Like, oh, three of those at one table. And you're wow. the one that's not playing Recursion. You're just sitting there like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is getting pretty dangerous, guys. Um, so anyway, moving on from Marin. We've got the Mimeoplasm. There was a little bit of uh, argument when this card was brought up. Yeah. I look at it as Recursion, um, but I don't know. Greg brought up, brought up a good point about how it exiles the, exiles the card and kind of replaces it instead of recurring it, which makes a lot of sense, you know, mm -hmm. once you think about it. You know, when uh, the, this was from the very first EDH or Commander series, and I remember this is what I played, and uh, at the look, the gaming shop I went to, we you open your box and you had a tournament. Yes. And I was playing my good friend, and I had him whooped, and I tried to, I tried to destroy something that was indestructible, and that's what cost me the game. Oh man! Right at the end, but yeah, this was a very good card. It, I mean, I've seen a lot of people make the deck, but then it's like you know, people just give up on it. Again. Well, I don't know. I've we've had a lot of crazy variations. I mean, I some of the worst have been like a 10-10 Shieldred and it's just like oh gosh that thing has Swamp Walk yeah. and all these things it, yeah <clears throat> I mean I've seen much worse too like I think it, some, at some point somebody grabbed a Kozilek so what is a 12-12 now and it's just like two hits of that and you're just done you know right 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 so that's the Mimeoplasm and then we've got Shroom the Hegemon a, another really well known one. Oh yeah um, Combo Artifact City Center. with yeah. this guy oh yeah yeah uh, it's, you know, an old favorite of a lot of people. It definitely um, does what you want to do in Esper Artifacts, for sure. And yeah, if, if you got something that does damage when a creature comes in, and you're able to clone this guy, or there's a way of just bouncing, and endless bounce with him and stuff. Well, yeah, like you were saying earlier, she's in the right colors for Flicker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, any of those effects will just, you know, like Restoration Angel, like, pfft, there you go. You, know? you put, um, um, oh, um, Blood artist out, yeah, and then this is killing itself over and over again. Yeah, I actually someone tried to do that to me here at this location. I had the uh, with the the, um, the the equipment that every time you attack, you get two counters on it, and you can put a minus one counter or gain life. It's expensive. Jite, yeah. yeah, there we go. I was like, so I had three <laughs> counters on Jite, and he went to do that. It says in response, I'll kill blood artist. And he just looked at me. You've seen this combo before? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knew he was wise to what was going on there. So that's Shrew. Um, now we're going on to Tanab. Um, I have this guy kind of as a budget option because I I like to try and cover all options. I've played a few games with Tanab as a commander before. It's not bad. I mean, it's like the 1.0 version of Carador or any of those kind of Abzan reanimator yeah. decks. I mean, it's interesting because you can also recur from other people's graveyards, which is kind of cool. You know, bring back a creature from their graveyard and put it on their field. Yeah, what's what's the guy who comes in? Uh, the black white guy comes in and you exile a permit. And if he oh, dies, uh, uh, Archon of something. Uh, it's not just Ashen Rider. Ashen Rider. There we go. Yeah, we have a player here. He plays this as general and he gets the Ashen Rider oh, yeah. over and over again. Yeah. I play him in my um, my big dragon deck, the five color dragons. Yes. And what I like to do is go get him early. Uh -huh. Kill off my general and then use him to get my general back oh. the next turn. And That's not I'm a off bad the way to do that. Yeah, because yeah, then my general is putting that creature in, and then I'm getting him back with him. Huh? That's not a bad idea at all. Yeah. So there's kind of our budget option with Taneb. Um, moving on from that, we've got Shieldred. Of course, oh, we couldn't yeah. we couldn't do a list without Shieldred, <laughs> as Greg brought up. Um, Mono black. There are a ton of mono black decks built around this card. It is a definite recursion engine. The definition of recursion engine, oh, yeah. I would say. Um, she's super intimidating, of course, as herself. A six-six swamp walk, which most of the time matters, especially if you're playing Urborg. You just put it out and you can swing at anybody without even being able to block you. So right, it's great. Right. But I mean, the other side of it, obviously, having everybody sacrifice a creature at the beginning of their upkeep is ridiculously awesome too. So it kind of plays into that whole recursion theme where, mm -hmm. you know, what if you have stuff to recur stuff from their graveyard as well? So, awesome card, I'd it say. It is. It's very awesome. And when it drops, everybody just, their heart stops. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, and everybody, I mean, that's when, it's funny because when this guy comes out, the other three people all kind of start working together. Yeah. What can we do? What can we do? Which, Unless someone has 
uh, a card out that says they don't have to yes. sack. Like Sigarda or something like that. Yeah. Would yeah. you say this is probably the most played Predator? At least here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah at least here. Because exactly. I know close is probably Elish Norn, but besides that, I mean, the other ones are very, very sparse, yeah, you know, in yeah, comparison. Yeah. This guy is just so good. Yeah, Shildred's, yeah. Most is Commander, too. So, um, yeah. And, you know, he fits in really good with Reanimator himself because he is black. Oh, yeah. And you can just, if he dies, go get him, you know? Yeah. If he's your general, then you're yeah. <laughs> So on from Shildred, we've got, in my opinion, the king of reanimation, which is mm -hmm. Carador. Um, I, I can't really say enough about this guy. He's ridiculously awesome. Carador is probably one of my favorite creatures of all time. Not only because of the cost reduction side of it, but because of the recursion, the colors are great. I mean, he's not a bad body. He's a 3-5. He's my favorite, one of my favorite creature types, which is Spirit. So, mm -hmm. oh, you know, yeah. just awesome card all the way around. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've never played with the card, but I've seen a lot of people oh, yeah. play it, and it's a great general. I've had three decks, and I, I've torn apart each one of them because they get too good, in my opinion. Uh, I, I like to kind of shift, you know, shift things around so I don't like what? become the enemy so much all the time. But, you heard it right? Yeah, <laughs> but he knows. I do it all the time. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah, I like Carador. Yes. Is that our last? Uh, uh, yeah, commander? I believe this is the last legendary besides I, wanted, I just thought of one. I mean, I'm, we're not going to show the picture, no. obviously, but uh, is it Bruna? Oh yeah, enchantments. Yeah, he goes and pulls all the enchantments out of the graveyard, and I, I think played you with just a girl. Have to swing with her, right? You just yes, uh, you swing do. with her, and then you can pull all the and up auras north. And up north, I used to play a girl. Used to use traumatize herself, half her <laughs> friggin', and then play Bruna and win the game. Well, that's not <laughs> a bad way to do that either. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. So, um, anyway, on from this, we're going to move on to a legendary Planeswalker, which is Dredde. Mm -hmm. um, and I hate this deck you play. I know. it's <laughs> This is one I will never tell, tear apart. I will tell you that. This, this you deck, got it fine-tuned. Yes, it's really, well, it really I, had, plays well. I had a lot of help, as Eric knows, uh, <laughs> building this one. So, I don't know. It's, it's ridiculously powerful. The guy puts what you want in the graveyard for you, then you can reanimate it. Like, mm -hmm. you can't really get better than that. And overall like the minus 10 you'll probably never get there but you really don't need it it's fairly costed yeah. at four in my opinion it, it's an amazing card and, and it's outside of that esper artifact wheelhouse it's mono red which mm. is you know the, so many good mono red decks never were made because people were just like this color is not very good the more and more i build mono red decks the more and more i fall in love with that and it's color. funny because most of the artifact des destruction is red yes well, you, I mean, <laughs> like Shattering Spree and all that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like, what, what's the one with Overload? I always forget the name. Yeah, of that it's. Um, um, oh, yeah, yes. Vandal yes. Blast. Oh, my God. But gosh. let's save that for I, our, our card hate. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> look, we're looking at possibly doing a, a episode about hate yes, cards. Yes, that'll be and, next time. And, yeah, so. Hopefully. Well, yeah. Unless we come up with something else, but most likely. Um, so, anyway, on from Dorette, we've got another plan one other Planeswalker in here, and it's actually a new card. It's uh, Liliana's Death's, Ma or Liliana Death's Majesty. Sorry. Blah. Um, this, to me, works almost exactly the same way as Dorette in a lot of ways. It puts you what you want in the graveyard, gives you a defense for yourself, and then you can minus three and reanimate a creature from your graveyard and make it a zombie itself. Mm -hmm. Like, this card is definitely up there as far as new Planeswalkers for EDH to me. And, and the whole zombie theme, because of the new... Um... Uh, uh, the white zombies that come in play now yes there's a lot of create white zombies and and this seems like a really, really good white black zombie deck that oh, yeah. be, and she would be a key component of it. well any i mean blue black grixis zombies mm -hmm. i think i'd put her in any variation of that or even non-zombie decks i'd just put her in as a yeah, good yeah. reanimation planeswalker right, right and right. like her her Minus seven destroy all non-zombie non creatures isn't bad either. Like no. it's not the best thing in the world, but well, it's she comes a pretty in with five wide. loyalty, so it doesn't take long. A couple of turns, no. you're at seven. Uh, she's she's a uh, probably a turn four or five, you know, uh, planeswalker to come in. Yeah, which is depending on your ramp. Yeah, yeah, and if if someone's playing a bunch of tokens or something, this could really just reset the board for yourself. Yes, I, I know I have two copies of the card right now, and I'm looking at getting a third because it's yeah. it's just that cool. I've used it once so far. In that game, it really turned it around for me. I played her. I played against her in pre-release, and it tore me in the. Oh game. yeah, limited. Oh god, this thing is <coughs> insane. Well, well, any planeswalker. Putting is a zombie out every turn—that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we're going to transition here a little bit. We're going to go on to our regular creatures, non-legendary creatures. I got to pull up a different list here, so bear with me for a second. No, 
Oh, I went to the wrong thing. Uh, there we go. Technology is hard. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Especially when your tablet doesn't want to work with you. Okay. So anyway, uh, we're on to creatures now. Uh, so we've got, first one up is Goblin Welder. Um, mm -hmm. He's uh, great in the Dredde deck. He's great in pretty much any deck. I know a lot of people use him very trickily, where they'll be like, oh, you've got that awesome artifact on the table, but you've got a really bad artifact in your graveyard. Like, oh, I'm yeah. just going to give you your, I don't know, uh, expedition signet, map yeah. or something, you know. In place of your uh, whatever. <laughs> yes, yes. Pretty cool card, but... Worm Coil Engine. Uh, put that in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but trouble is, you can get two tokens. But, yeah. You know, and this is from the Urza block, which I was a big fan of it. I bought a lot of Urza stuff, and yeah. there's still some amazing cards in it. Well, and overall, this guy, I mean, he's, he comes out really early. He does a lot, you know, oh, for yeah. his costs. All you have to do is tap him. Mm -hmm. Like, that's insane. I... I I don't think this card would be printed the way it is now if it were printed today. I think it would like probably cost like three or something to activate the ability or something like that. So and and, and it works for yourself too. I mean, yeah. you, you well, that's you, you could hurt your. Opponent, I guess that's but, the application yeah. we're mainly talking about yeah. for it in our video, but yeah. Uh, it's yeah, swap it's, out an artifact token thopter oh, yeah. or something for something huge. In yeah, the graveyard. Here's yeah. here's a uh, what's the Theros Titan? I can't remember his name. Yeah, Colossus of Akros. Oh, we yeah. just need like a list of names right here. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we have our, our good buddy here. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, that's Goblin Welder. Of course, we had to oh, bring yeah. this guy up. We've got Snapcaster Mage. Um, I know a lot of people, don't, when they think of Recursion, they don't necessarily jump right to instants and sorceries and spells and stuff like that. But it definitely is you know, a big factor in Recursion, being able to replay your spells from your graveyard, your, your instants and sorceries, stuff like that. You think about if you're recurring a, some kind of a clone effect. Oh, yeah. You're pretty much putting a creature in play. You know? Well, anything, really. Counter spell, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, but I'm just talking about Recursion. I mean, it's kind of hand in hand. You go get a spell that could put a creature in yes. play. So. Yes, yes. I know a close second for this was Archaeomancer, but we decided to kind of leave that off the list, mm -hmm. just because, you know, Snapcaster. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the golden boy. So. You know, that, what's that high cost wall oh you know, i know what you're talking yeah. about but yeah it just kind of it's not cost efficient but i mean i mean it's I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> well we'll move on from that for there me. You go. but it's so, a great card yes uh, and then we've got oh, yeah. one of the staples of recursion eternal witness uh i've seen a lot of ridiculous things done with this card oh yeah i've seen you do ridiculous things well, with yeah. this card i love what's the I love one that you uh, this. you bounce all opponents Attacking creatures. Oh back yeah, Aetherize. Yeah, he was doing Aetherize yeah. and you go getting it every turn. It's like that was way back in the day. That oh, was yeah. when I was still playing Damia. <laughs> you just cycle through that and just grab Aetherize so no one could attack you. Uh, those were the early days of me playing EDH. I had a lot of fun. Recursion oh, engines yeah. are a thing. But yeah, Ewit, as she's known by, is if you're playing green, it's probably in there. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, and you know. A lot of people, when they talk about this card, they bring up the obvious comparison or like combination of Eternal Witness and Skull Clamp. Mm -hmm. Like that, those two cards right there just work hand in hand. You Skull Clamp the Eternal Witness, put it in the graveyard, recur the Eternal Witness somehow, getting back a card, then Skull Clamp mm -hmm. the Eternal Witness and drawing two cards is. Plus, it's a great bounce. If you can bounce Eternal Witness yes. every turn. I mean, I saw somebody run this with like Victimize and just like, I think nice. they recur like four times. Well, her and Marin. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that that doesn't even need to be said. Yeah. Like, this card in Marin's stupid. Yeah, uh, yep. Oh, Marin. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll all have nightmares about yeah. Marin for the next couple of years. I think. I think even when you like getting off topic a little bit, even when you look at like play, websites like EDH Rec and everything like that, she's still like one of the top four. Oh yeah. And she's been that way for like I don't know months now. Okay. So anyway. On from Eternal Witness, uh, we're moving on to Loyal Retainers. It's just got its like third printing, I think, okay. in the uh, master or not masterpieces, the invocations for oh, okay. Mom and Cat. I just picked one up. It looks really cool, actually. It's one of the only cards I like in that style. Mm. Um, but card's awesome. Uh, great for if you're playing like Han or not Hannah, um, Captain Sisse. Oh yeah, yeah. You know decks like that that really revolve around legendary creatures and stuff like that. Um, once again, kind of going with that same thing that we said about Eternal Witness, it's a 1-1, one, one, so it can be skull clamped, it can be sacked easily, it could be, you know, just thrown out there as a chump block, and you can grab one of your legendary creatures and put it in. Even if you're general, if it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's too expensive to cast from it, you left them in the graveyard, yeah. here he comes. 
And I think that's what a lot of people end up really using it for. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in quite a few 1v1 lists. I think that's where it's more prevalent. What, what's the, um, there's a white creature that, or is it, one of the cards that you, you everything that died went to the graveyard, you can bring it back. Oh, there's a few of those. Yeah, there's, there's a few of them. There's a white oh, angel, I think it does it. But there's also one that you sack, you yeah. sack it, and then it returns the cards, and then you recur the general somehow. But uh, I can't remember. Yeah. But anyway, loyal retainers. Yeah, great well, card. Yeah, <laughs> human advisor. I love the typing. <laughs> and then we've got uh, next up is Scarecrow. A little bit more artifact recursion. Oh, this yeah. card is great um, not only does it recur but it also is a card draw if you need it to be mm -hmm. stuff like that so scarecrow one yeah. of the good scarecrows there's there's a few of them out there yeah, this yeah. is probably I one like of the Scuttlemutt. best i play scuttlemutt yes. a lot yes i'd love someone saying i got protection well protection from what it's not that color anymore <laughs> <laughs> and we saw how well uh, grim poppet works oh geez <laughs> <laughs> yeah we said if you saw the last video you know all about it. oh yeah grim poppet is uh pretty good when you can have two of them <laughs> And you have a Hepatra deck with somehow to give haste. Oh, anyway, um, moving on from that, we've got an old favorite of mine from Innistrad. Uh, actually, it's Dark Ascension, but same block. Um, having Gulich. Mm -hmm. um, I not a lot of people play with this card. Surprisingly, it's an yeah, underplayed one in my yeah, opinion. I saw it a lot in Standard. Oh yeah, back in Standard days, it was amazing. You know. Yeah. It's a zombie wizard, which is that's two key yes. naming. Right there, that well, she can do a lot with. I know a huge deck recently is send triplets because you're mm -hmm. you're gonna end up trying to make all five colors of mana anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. So then you can activate her or it. I don't know if it's a he or her, whatever <laughs> it is, <laughs> to grab a creature from pretty much anywhere mm -hmm. and be able to pay the cost, which right. is, I don't know, insane. But overall, having Golich, definitely one of my favorite cards. The zombie wizard creature typing is amazing yeah, too. Yeah. You know, put this in a zombie tribal deck, you'll be happy. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's having Ghoul Lich. Um, now we've got, you know, yep. Karmic Guide. <laughs> it's so good, especially the, even, I mean, it's got an echo cost, which can be hindersome at times, but it also allows you to put it back in your graveyard if you don't Which can it. be helpful. I mean, there's, it's a two-edged sword. It is flying protection from black. Yes. So if you are playing against a black deck, there you go. Leave it out. If you're not, don't care. Let it go back to the graveyard and get it back later. You know. I just wish I could bounce it with the Restoration Angel, but you know, well, you can't know. have everything. Yeah, what's uh, <laughs> geez, I can think of uh, Eldrazi Displacer. Yeah, Eldrazi Maybe. Displacer. You know, Feldar Guardians, the new one, or Dead Eye Navigator. I mean, yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> let's look, let's not be coy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's Karmic Guide, and then next card I believe is one of the best pairings for this, which mm -hmm. is Rebel Arc. Oh yeah. Um, you pair those two together and. Yeah. And you got something well, that, that, that will you sacrifice to it to get something for it. Just... Well, and just imagine that with like a Panharmonicon. And then you're just. Oh, jeez. Yeah. You know, yeah, Panharmonicon, it's surprising it's not in every EDH deck. Uh, I'm surprised, yeah, too. I mean, yeah. that card, I, yeah, yeah. It's, it does a lot for the, uh, what it costs and everything like that. I. I know a lot of people are saying it should be banned. I don't think it should be banned. I, it, I mean, it, like your one deck, your minus one counters, it would really have oh, killed it, them all. Yeah. Your Grim Pavis couldn't have stayed in. <laughs> no. I, well, I learned that pretty quick in that deck that I needed to watch that kind of stuff. I left right. the snake out of there because of uh, that. You know, yeah. I ended up killing a lot of my own creatures yeah. because of that. Uh, but yes, Rebel Arc, I've seen this played in a lot of different decks, a lot of different ways. Darien's a big one. That's a huge one. Oh, yeah. This. yeah. Um, the, as uh, mentioned before, um, Alesha is a huge one as well because it grabs mm. those creatures that you want. Right. Basically anything that's going small. Um, I know a good buddy of ours, Kylie, uses this in his Rabinia deck and it, mm. it just is a, a house when it comes out. It right. causes yeah. a lot of things. Um, but yeah, Revlark. Cool card. Elemental. Creature typing. Awesome typing. I love the elemental. So. <laughs> so moving on from Revlark, we've got a, another spell recursion engine. Mm -hmm. Um, this is Charmbreaker Devils. Uh, it's random, which I think is actually a lot of fun. That's but, what red is. <laughs> well, yeah, it's random, but if there's only one in the graveyard, that's yeah. what you, when you're getting. Yeah, really. So you can kind of, you know, control it to a point. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know how many games I've been saved by this card. And it's it's another one of those cards that I believe is very underplayed. Because not a lot of people even know it exists. Yeah, when you keep recurring Cyclonic Rift, and people, <laughs> <laughs> people frown. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things you could throw in there, but Cyclonic Rift is definitely, like, maybe the top. 
I, I know that when, um, one person was playing a four color deck and they were recurring uh, shoot what is the name of that card the one where you pay um, black green and blue and you oh, and X yeah. and then oh, I wish I could remember the name of it but anyway yeah yes villainous wealth there we go like that card and this card were just ridiculous because that's all he had in his graveyard, but he just kept like destroying everybody else's. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got library. a lot of mana. What's the one that they have to discard five cards or sack five creatures, and, and then you get oh. a draw? And, and <laughs> put that many from your graveyard. There's a recursion right there, right? Through ultimatum. We just need to have Eric like right here. <laughs> <laughs> He's our producer. Yes, he, he knows this stuff. He's smart about these cards. You'd think we'd be prepared. But yeah, but... this is one of my favorite cards. <laughs> he, he, he's another one when you put him out. I mean, he, he's six for a 4-4, four, four, but he does have 4-4, four, four, and he does can well, stay out for a while. And you can buff him to oh, wherever yeah. you want him to be. Just play a couple spells, and he becomes a six all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. It's just, or not even a six, eight, an eight. Eight-four, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, yeah. So he gets big fast, and usually, I mean, I've finished people off with this card before, so Charm Breaker Devils. It's so great. When, when, a, when a spell has rebound, is that the same as casting? Yeah, you can still cast it. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, yeah. I'm not certain. I'm pretty well, sure you can cast it. It goes on top of your, it, it, you. You cast it the next turn for free. Yeah. yeah. Is that? I mean, that's still casting. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Assuming it's his cast, I might say make copies. But I, well, and if I you think about this in like my Jorian deck, the one that just cycles through cards, that um, I think I I try and play like five. It's it's kind of a storm deck, but it's not really a storm deck. You play like eight cards in a turn. This guy is all of a sudden just a monster. So. I was talking about blue with this card. Yeah. The uh, card that gives you two upkeeps. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> don't even talk. Paradox Haze? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't even, <laughs> don't even bring that up. All, all of a sudden, everybody's going to be playing this in Jorah. Yeah. Great, yeah. great way to go, Greg. Jeez. <laughs> way to abuse it. All for good, Greg. Yeah, all for good. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to make bring the community the evil. better. <laughs> Not worse. <laughs> anyway. Charm Breaker Devils, we're going to Sun Titan. Oh, yeah. One of the uh, best recursion engines is probably in the entire game, really. Yes. Um, one of the best Titans. Yes. One of the best Titans. Well, it's at, well for this format, specifically. Uh, I know that people like looping this, especially with, like, Burnished Heart. Like, that is the best feeling in the world. When you can put down a Burnished Heart, sacrifice it, go grab two lands, swing with Sun Titan, grab back your Burnished Heart, sacrifice it, grab two uh, lands. That's just... Uh, uh, land destruction, wasteland, oh, and yeah. strip mine, and... See, I don't like playing EDH that way, so uh, I don't <laughs> I've played a bunch of people that do that here. I'm just kidding. You, know, you blow up a couple of their lands and they panic, and that they'll strip mine you and then do it again and just oh, smile yeah. at you. Yeah. Well, well, it works. I mean. Oh, yeah, it does. All right, there's a lot of other things, obviously, that you can get back with this, but uh, Sun Titan. It's, I mean, it should probably go in pretty much any deck that has white in it that can reasonably run this. And there was the, um, the guy that recurs a, a card from your graveyard, the white flyer and uh, we just talked about it that uh, has echo oh the karmic guide yeah, yeah. Karmic, it gets karmic guide back yeah well i mean there's a t eternal witness like oh, green yeah. white tokens like oh yeah so sun titan uh, great with fetch lens too i just wanted to put that in there <laughs> so on from sun titan i think we're moving on to i think we're going to Artifacts? yes one sec i gotta reformat this a little bit Okay, so dun, we're, dun, dun, dun. we're on to artifacts here. Now, we've got another one of the best cards, in my opinion, for what it does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's Crucible Worlds. I actually pulled two of those during a pre-release, I think. Oh, man. Yes. That's crazy. Actually, at the old Collector Mania. Oh. I remember getting them. Nostalgia. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I know, I keep looking for the Masterpiece one. My gosh, oh, that card man. is beautiful. I, I, I just yeah the artwork is I think it costs like 150 dollars or something crazy like that oh but wow it's it's not I mean regulars of this cost like 80 dollars so mm. let's be fair I mean yeah. that's anyway but crucible that, that's worlds. another one with the wasteland strip mine yeah. you know that's what it's you know most commonly used for yeah it's really good with uh, the the big frog mm. the... get rock frog oh yeah yeah it's good with him. Yeah. See, sometimes I can think of card names. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Crucible of Worlds, uh, great card. Great in pretty much any deck that you can put it into. Um, once again, the price tag is kind of a concern. A lot of people have a hard time picking this one up. I think I have one copy of the card, and I have a lot of decks. So, I mean, that, that kind of shows you 
you know, some people probably are going to prioritize some other I stuff like the, over this. I like the text on there, too. Oh, amidst, amidst the darkness, ashes grow the strongest seeds. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Eric pretty has profound. the other, other one up. He's got the <laughs> Masterpiece one up. But we've got the old the 10th edition, I think. Yeah, 10th edition. So anyway, Crucible Worlds, uh, moving on to our next artifact. We've got Sword of Light and Shadow. Oh, jeez. Uh, one of the infamous swords. Um, all of them are insane. This is probably one of my favorite ones, to be honest. I know a lot of people don't really think about it that way, but yeah, yeah. it does a lot for what you're using it for. And pro black and pro white. I mean, that's Animar in a nutshell, right there. Like yeah, that. Yeah. That makes him almost impossible and to get rid of already. That so. gets rid of a lot of the, the instant removal, exile, yeah. destroy. Um, you know, black has all kinds of uh, removal. White yes. exile. That just keeps that guy from ha that happening to it. Yeah, in the life gain, yeah, it's nice, but the recursion is really what oh, you yeah. want this for, yeah. plus the protection, of course. But uh, I know that I've played with this card as a recursion engine before, and it's worked out just fine, especially when you can find it with like Stone Forge or stuff like that. You know, cool card. You can put it in any any deck, which is nice as well. You know, you can throw it in your mono red deck, you can throw it in your mono blue deck, you mm. can put it wherever you want it to be. So it's kind of like one of those. Uh, <laughs> Really versatile reanimator targets. Yeah. Yeah. All, all the all the, the equipment uh, swords, yeah. they all seem to be pretty well, good. Well, there's a reason why they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, those are our artifacts. Uh, we're moving on to our enchantments here. I believe we only have two here too as well. Uh, there were quite a few that we thought about for the list, but I think these were the, the two big ones in my opinion. Okay. So first up we've got Animate Dead. Uh, just a really good way to grab a creature early. Oh, I've yeah. found, you know, mana cost two. So. I played in Legacy. Guy drops that big blue guy that you destroys your hand. He gets a full hand every turn. He reanimates oh, it on turn two. Oh, Taxius. Yeah, he free he embo embalm, I guess. Entomb. There he entombs go. it. Brings it back turn two. Yes. And I go to path it, and he's got was it dash? Days. Yeah. So he dazes it. It's like great. Go to the next game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, animate dead. Uh, I know one of the artworks actually has Sun Titan on it, which is kind of cool. I, I never realized that until it was brought up um, with the uh, the new printing of uh, Terminate, because I guess that completes the cycle. If the you old printing is like a skeleton, isn't it? Well, yes, it is kind of. It's very skeletal, but it, it actually is supposed to be Sun Titan. So oh. Sun Titan, then animate dead, and then it's supposed to have. Uh, terminate as the last one in the cycle you'll have to check it out oh, okay, I, I, yeah. I just le learned about it recently and it actually it holds up I, I thought it was pretty cool <laughs> so anyway um, animate dead well I guess terminate would be in the middle of those two so it'd be sun titan terminate then animate dead that makes a lot more sense now that I think about it so anyway uh, now we've got debtors Nell. Um, I like this card a lot I've tried to play it in a million decks but I think it's one of those cards I know a lot of people say the the hundredth card you know you just can't oh, fit yeah. it in you know it's just it's good enough to be considered but it's it just is, not good enough to get in there you know when you try to do the mana curve and you look at how many seven costs and you see how many good seven yes. costs there are yeah i can see where that could i mean when it hits the board and it stays it's amazing but it's one of those cards that you gotta wait until the next upkeep for it to do anything for mm -hmm. you and that's a lot of mana to put into something for to wait you know yeah, yeah. So, uh, cool card. I, I like the idea a lot. Um, obviously, the greedy side of me wants it to cost like four instead of seven, <laughs> but that's me being greedy. Oh, yeah. It'd have to be like whip or something at that point where it exiled the creature afterwards. But hey, I'd be okay with that still, you know, whatever. Right, right. So anyway, that's uh, our art artifacts and enchantments. I believe now we're moving on to our sorceries. Okay. So first up, oh, this is what I was thinking of reanimating. Ah, there we go. Yeah, he's like, he's like, well, I guess he's not a skeleton. He's just a dead guy hanging there. Oh yeah, yeah. So more of a zombie-looking guy. One of the cheapest reanimation spells there are, or there is, and there are. Yeah, <laughs> there is really. Um, awesome card. I think I have a few copies of this. I don't know how many copies. Oh, I you got have. a bunch. Okay, so it, it, just cool card. You know, I know it's used in a lot of. Uh, strategies as far as our meta you know <laughs> right, right early right. recursion um so reanimate imagine putting that on a um, ice crown scepter Ugh. don't even say, don't even say that <laughs> is, is ice crown scepter only instance though is it instance or oh i think it is instance yeah i think it? it's only instance yeah it might be. I, I don't know yeah. 
hey, you guys can comment and correct yeah. us on that. Um, so anyway, um, on from that we've got Life from the Loam, another kind of land recursion spell, plus Dredge, which oh, is yeah. huge, you know. Usually when you're playing a lot of uh, reanimation kind of things, or recursion type effects, you're playing something that wants to mill itself as well. Oh so. yeah, and you're putting three cards in and you're getting three lands, that seems really good. This definitely, Again with a big frog and yeah. a couple other things that uh, lands that you just, you know, wasteland is, you know. Has kind of a strip mining purpose, again. yeah. <laughs> so that's Life from the Loam. And then we've got one of my be my favorite recursion cards of all time, which is Victimize. I know I have done some pretty insane things with this card, like uh, just sacrificing my 1-1 one, one token to get back a Ce Cephalacoral Primordial yeah, and a yeah. you know Restoration Angel to bounce it and do it again. Uh, like, stuff like that. Yeah, he's really good in Marchessa. Oh, or yeah. Victimize is very good in Marchessa. <laughs> I can imagine. Get the counters on there and just go crazy. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, so that's Victimize. <laughs> then we've got Dread Return, a little bit of fa flashback. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people will pay that cost usually happily. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sacrificing three creatures in a recursion deck is like whatever. Four cost two isn't bad. Um, and it plus, return dark creature card from your graveyard to play. I mean, that says it all right there. Awesome card. And then we've got a, another spell kind of heavy one, which is Mizzix Mastery. Um... It's a newer card from the Commander set. It uh, definitely has made a splash here. Um, a lot of Storm decks use it, uh, the Grixis ones especially. So okay. I, I don't know if you've run into it at all. You see it has an overload too. Oh yeah. Those things always seem scary. Well, that's when it becomes really scary. <laughs> it's when somebody overloads mm -hmm. it. That's when you what you really want to be doing. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't a lot of this cycle, I don't know how you really feel about, like, a lot of the commander cards that are coming in, you know, through the commander products. Right, right, right. They, they seem to be, since they're geared towards commander, they seem to be especially powerful in the format, which I've is pulled nice. some out of my decks to replace them, and then found places from the ones I pulled. Oh, yeah. They fit better on some of the other, you know, just, hey, this really fits good in there. I mean, this yeah. is probably typical of that. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I... Any spell slinger deck that's in red should be running this, in my yeah. opinion. It, I mean, it can win you the game like oh, that. Yeah. You get enough spells in your graveyard as long as they're not all counter spells. You play spells, something I know if you like, make uh, that mistake. you know, whatever damage you take at the end of turn, you take that damage again. <laughs> yeah. And something like this, a lot of spells, it, you can most them down fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's Mizzix's Mastery. And then where you've got another one of those big spell ones, which is Pass in Flames. Um, obviously this one had a big following in Modern for a very long time. Um, card is great. I like it in EDH as well. It's, uh, you know, right up there with Mystic's Mastery, which we were just talking about. The only right. difference here is that you have to pay the cost for the spells that you're casting. Right. Which, you know, <laughs> usually can be okay, because you've got, like, the goblin guys out there that lower your mana cost for spells, and you've got your Mystic's Commander, you've got, mm. you know, whatever else you really need. And then this card with, like, you know, the, uh, the charm breaker doubles like oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just recur this well yeah. if you can't you can't choose but you know if yeah it happens, yeah if you, happens. you're lucky enough to get it back yeah plus it does have hash back you know to maybe I don't know. yeah so that's pass in flames and then we've got another another one that's a little bit different which is replenish um returning all your enchantments especially if you're you're in a enchantment based build and mm. you know your opponents aren't necessarily in one Enchantress well, I deck. guess this is only yours. No, it is all everybody's. Never mind. Um, so no, from your graveyard to play. Is it? Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, cool. I'm thinking of the other one, the bigger one. Yeah. So if you're playing Enchantress, yeah, it could be really, <laughs> really good. Yeah. Especially if you're cycling or discarding it, bring them all back. Well, like we talked about with Hannah earlier. I mean, there's the artifact build up, and there's the enchantment yeah. build of it. And right. This right. definitely works in the enchantment build, and really anywhere that's like Bruna like you were saying oh, that would yeah. be great in that deck any of those type of things so mm -hmm. replenish and then we've got one of my favorite cards from Conspiracy Extract from Darkness um, it's kind of crazy you know you get everybody has to mill the top two cards of the library then you get to choose a creature from a library and put it into play yeah, a graveyard yeah a graveyard sorry yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, that effect to me is insane. You can oh. basically grab whatever you want to. Oh, yeah. So. Very nice. And then we've got a really big one, which is also a board wipe. <laughs> is, you know, uh, I, it, yes, it is a board wipe. And I 
Well, playing like uh, I play. I don't play this on my Marchesa deck because my stuff's coming back. But I love when someone casts against me and I kill all my creatures. And well, in response, all here they all go yeah. to the graveyard, and here they come back. Yeah, a lot of people make that mistake of not using or not looking at your sack outlet. You know, like one Viscera Seer is all it takes. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you just you know, you're in a better position than the person that casts the card, right, right. which isn't what they yeah, want. And I, at we're all. not going to mention hate, but I just there's the card that says when it comes <laughs> in and it's got flash and all car, all creatures that came back from the graveyard are exiled instead. And I played this against a couple of decks here that use Loving Death, and then they are very sad because everything's gone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that Containment Priest? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's an effect like that, yeah. anyway. And then we've got kind of like a tribal version of that, almost, in uh, Patriarch's Bidding. Um, this card is another one of those underlooked ones. Not a lot of people even know it exists, to be honest. Um, yeah. I've seen great. them in Sliver decks. And I remember playing against a guy who was playing Slivers, and I was playing... Oh, was I playing, um, it wasn't Rebels, it was something similar to Rebels, but it was, no, it was Vampires. Oh, okay. And he says, you get a name, everybody names, right? Yeah. She was, and and the other guy was not playing any tribal at all, so yep. we got all our slivers and got all my vampires back, and the other guy wasn't happy. <laughs> the very first time I played against this uh, card was in a uh, Dragon's... Uh, tribal deck uh, now that was ridiculous oh, yeah. that was absolutely insane i couldn't believe what happened after that and ever since then i've tried to put it in pretty much every tribal deck that has black in it most recently a lot of people have been putting in the five color allies deck which is absolutely ridiculous well, can you imagine all those triggers I need to put that in my five color allies yeah you. you should probably put that in your five color <laughs> allies deck greg because it is insane well, good thank you just mill uh, yourself to like one card in your library oh, and then play uh, this producer oh. set side one for me please. <laughs> <laughs> so that's patriarch's bidding uh, then we've got Scrap Mastery, which is kind of, you know, the same as the other two, it's except for just for It's on there, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's from the Commander product, specifically. Oh, okay. so, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it came in that deck, which, uh, this card's ridiculous. It's amazing. I recently built a Grixis Artifacts deck, and this was one of the first cards that went in there, because mm -hmm. it is insane. Um, really, almost, you feel like, when you play this card in the actual Dorede deck, you almost feel like that's actually pulling off the ultimate of Dorede. It's a living death yeah or artifacts exactly wow yeah have you played against this card before i have never had it go off on me oh really well yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to correct that because wow. you've got to see the power of this thing it's insane <laughs> she's like i'll just put these tokens in my graveyard or you know exile them and then i'll just put all this stuff from my graveyard into the play and you're just like yeah. ah. so that's scrap mastery and then we've got more of a targeted one which is unburial rights um came out in a strat another one of my mm -hmm. favorite cards from that block the flashback is really the killer on this. Just being able to flash it back from your graveyard to play another creature from your graveyard. Right. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, I know it was a favorite of back then. A lot of people played it in their Abzan reanimator decks at that time. Yeah. You know, back then it was called Junk, not Abzan, but right, you know, right. what can you do? So that's Unbarrel Rights. Then we've got the bigger one that I was thinking of when we were talking about Replenish, which is Open the oh, Vaults. Yeah. Um, so it returns all artifacts and enchantments from the graveyard to the battlefield. Um, pretty good. I like this card a lot. You definitely have to be careful with it. Um, I've seen people, you know, kind of doom themselves by playing this at the wrong time. So yeah. either have that art or that graveyard hate, and be able to kind of control what other people are getting back, or you know, make sure that what's in your graveyard is going to win you the game. Still a great card though for its cost and everything. Awesome card. Then we've got the. Uh, Probably the card that's won against me the most in this whole category, which is Rise of the Dark Realms. Um, oh, I hate this thing. Yeah, oh, I know. Gosh. It's it's a menace, and uh, people that play it know when to play it and how to play it for the most part. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna throw out a name, Sawyer. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely knows how. <laughs> he this is his, probably his favorite win condition in that deck, I would say, besides maybe Gerard himself, but. Oh, this card. That's when you want Homer Path out and go, okay. You'd yeah. think at, you know, nine converted mana costs that you wouldn't see it pop up as much as it does, but yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It's just like, why aren't, why aren't I running more Terminus effects instead of Wrath of Gods? <laughs> I mean, really, this is just killing me right now. So yeah, Rise of the Dark Realms. Um, from that, we are actually moving on to lands, I believe. We've only got two on here. Kind of left a little bit light. Mm-hmm. Um, two of my favorites, though. Uh, yeah. First up is Academy Ruins. Um, and they're both not very cheap. But... No. <laughs> well, 
this card to me, I don't know. This was probably one of my first cards that I pulled that really got me into EDH. I got this, I remember, in the first Modern Masters. And I got a foil. Oh, and nice. I had to use it somehow because it was a foil. And Eric once again brought up to me that I should start playing EDH. And oh, I think yeah. I built a... A send triplets the rest is history. EDH deck. Yeah, now now I love the format. This is all I do. Standard, blah, modern, blah, you know, whatever. But yeah, Academy Ruins, really good card. Um, love it to death. I, I've had nothing but good experiences oh, with yeah. this. And from that, we've got Volaras Stronghold. Um, really, really cool card. I do play that one a lot. I only have one copy of this, unfortunately, and it's in German, I think, or something like I think that. I have so. two or three of them. Do you? I might trade you much. No. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't trade I wanna, my lands. I want to be able to read that. that card. I do not trade my lands. <laughs> okay, I'll find somebody else. <laughs> anyway, Bolas Stronghold. Really cool card. Um, great for putting things on top, you know, a creature on top mm -hmm. of your library. So. Okay. So, um, yeah, going through these, um, I, br I brought up some when I first got here, but of course, my mind keeps working. And um, persist. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if it's you a can, if you can utilize recursion. Persist, and it, yeah. it well, recurs. Well, I mean, you could say that about Undying, too. Well, the creature that gives everything Undying. Yeah. Here you What's, go. What's uh, Cauldron Haze? Not Cauldron Haze. Um, yes, Cauldron of Souls. That's the one I'm thinking of. Like, Cauldron of Souls. Oh, gosh. What's the... Oh, what's the... Uh, is it Artifact <coughs> Enchantment? As long as you have a creature out, if a creature died, it comes right back into play. I was going to get some crates with me. It was my oh. option. Living, living something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but if you, as long as you have a creature out, a creature dies, it comes right back into play. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. Uh, I didn't even know something like that existed. Yeah. You're gonna have to look it up. I'm gonna have to look us. it up. But yeah, it's something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something tell us what that, it is. Uh, something that I don't know. I keep thinking of when we, as we go through the list, is kind of ways to put things into your graveyard. I think that maybe mm. we should have. Maybe thought about putting a few yeah, cards on really here. some really good but... spells, the green-black spells. Uh, well, Grizzly Salvage, and yes. Tomb, Gerard's Orders. Like, there's mm -hmm. a ton of them that I can think of right, off the right, top right. of my head. But, you Plus, know. there's mill effects you can mill yourself. Oh, yeah. A lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. Like the orb that we were talking about earlier. Right, right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I mean, with that, really, I, I think that's the topic. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to bring up specifically about recursion. No, but um... Seasons passed. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is like we we're going to talk about probably some heat in another episode, but uh, I, you, 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 when you're playing against a graveyard deck, you, you better you get better it. have that yeah. heat. You know the bog. Yeah, that's you know, another one. But you know, yeah. well, and what's the uh, oh um, recursion of artifacts? Um, the um, the guy that makes goats pay one life, put a oh. zero one goat. If you uh, sack a creature and re return an artifact. Yes, trading post. Trading post. That's that another card. good one. Yeah, that card's it's, a hoot, though. Oh, yeah. Like, that could be put into a whole bunch of different lists. Like, weird creature, token maker, you know. Right, like, right. Zero, one, goat. And then I'll block your 10-10 and then sack it to go get an artifact. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, that is a fun card, though. Oh, yeah, I, it really You know, is. it's one of those that I think is underutilized in a lot of ways, too. You know, like we talked about earlier with a few other cards, but... Once you see somebody use that card that actually knows how to use it, oh, you're just yeah. like, oh, now I understand why people were going crazy about it when it first was spoiled. Oh, yeah, know? yeah. I remember the first time they reprinted it, everybody I knew, well, we got it. and they were all after them, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's, I mean, he puts out the little tokens of block, and, you know. <laughs> well, and, like, another way to kind of look at recursion, too, not only, like, getting stuff from, back from your graveyard, but putting stuff back in your hand sometimes could be considered mm -hmm. a way of recursion. So, like, oh, yeah. Bounce spells could be in this category as well. You know, of course, we didn't. I didn't want a 45 minute, right. you know, million minute long video or whatever. We may be there already. Oh, okay. So I didn't want a yeah. 58 minute video. There we go. <laughs> Edit. Uh, uh. But yeah, I think it went smooth. I think yeah. uh, I like this. I, I like, you know, taking a format and going and running with it with cards we like yeah. and we played with. Um, I it, think it's it makes you reminisce about yes. back in the day when we started playing EDH. You know, and I, I didn't really play EDH until I moved to Colorado, you know. And I think it's more interesting than, like, saying, like, what goes in a black deck, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, let's talk about, like, the function, like, the 
different archetypes you know like let's talk about artifact decks in general but not say let's not just focus on Sharoon you know right so I mean this will probably be a recurring thing as you can see so that goes right along with recursion here so anyway I, I think we're good to wrap up I'd oh, yeah. say I mean we're getting pretty long here so yeah. long in a tooth. <laughs> so thanks guys for tuning in um, of course you know Leave us any comments or what you'd like to see. You smash know, maybe, that like button. Yes, smash that like button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, let us know some cards that we missed. We'd like to see those too. Um, but with that, I think we're out, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks again. Bye.